So now I decided to make a video series. This is the first video where I power uh, simple circuits with a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So we're gonna do that right now. Hopefully the LED lights up and it lights up. I say hopefully because this is a cheap board, it's easy to uh, lose connection. But there you can see we lit it up. So I said 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. It's actually almost always higher than 12 volts. So now we will uh, zoom in. We have uh, to the schematic, we have a battery and then two current limiting resistors protecting the LED. I'll talk about uh, why coming up. But uh, there you can see we got uh, positive there coming to that resistor. Again, this is a cheap board, so we may lose a uh, connection from time to time. And uh, one resistor and then another resistor in series, 470 ohm resistors. And then our LED, long lead anode above, short lead cathode down below coming towards the uh, negative there. So a long time ago, I took just regular breadboard jumpers and uh, crimped, I just used pliers to squeeze the metal around it on the uh, alligator clips right there. So that I can plug it into the board pretty easily. And we're using a battery that can provide a lot of current, but we gotta make sure we limit current uh, down, you know, like an amp or less with these particular uh, wires. Um, much lower would be better. But in uh, any case, we have the lithium iron phosphate battery. So it's a 12 volt battery, but uh, there's four cells in series that have a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts for a total of 12.8 volts. So if you fully charge it to fully discharge it, um, so it's actually gonna be 13.6 volts down to 12 volts, the middle ground voltage is 12.8, and uh, these batteries have a pretty flat uh, voltage. Um, it quickly drops from about 13.6 to, you know, relatively close to 12.8 and then gets a little bit below 12.8 before dropping to 12. It's uh, relatively flat near about 12.8 most of the time. Um, we're not going to worry about that too much. But in case we got the two resistors and that's because if we apply a charger to this, it will likely uh, charge it up to 14.6 uh, volts. And uh, once it's fully charged, it's not letting any more current. You remove the charger and it quickly drifts down to probably 13.6 volts there. And you know, stays there uh, relatively uh, nicely, probably dipping down a little bit more. But in uh, any case, once it's fully charged, the charger is taken off, probably 13.6. Uh, but we have that potential of 14.6 if we uh, charge it while the circuit is there. And, um, which the circuit may affect the uh, charger, but we're not gonna worry about that now. So again, we have that maximum of 14.6 uh, volts. Uh, the LED though, we're using a red LED, drops about two volts. If we used a blue or a green LED, it would drop about three volts. Um, so with the red LED, we got about 12.6 volts across these two resistors right there. Um, their resistance adds up though to 940 ohms right there. If we use a single 1000 ohm resistor, it uh, will get pretty hot. Um, so it's not exceeding its wattage rating, but more than half of its wattage rating um, by quite a bit. And uh, so with these two resistors, they're gonna split up that voltage. So 12.6 uh, volts. But ultimately, um, with 940 ohms, we can expect about uh, 13 and a half milliamps of current, approximately, in this circuit if we had a charger applied. It's gonna be a little bit lower, um, probably about 13.6, so probably 11.6 volts across the uh, resistors, I should say, right there, instead of 12.6. But we're not gonna worry about that. This is a uh, kind of worst case scenario. So it'll be a little bit less than what you see here. So in any case, if we had a charger and it had the battery up to 14.6 uh, volts, while it's charging, um, then we would have uh, 6.3 volts across each of these resistors. They will split up that 12.6 volts evenly because they're equal value resistors, basic uh, voltage divider stuff. And uh, so there you can see the watch, 0 0.084. So if we used a single resistor that happened 940 ohms, 1000 ohms is close to that, then it would be absorbing all the power, a lone uh, resistor. Um, so that would be like 0.168 and uh, 
So they have a wattage rating of 0.25. Um, so it's not exceeding the wattage rating, but you still want to stay below half that, 0.125. So if we double this, it's quite a bit more than 0.125. So a lone resistor, quarter watt resistor, would get pretty hot. You could use a higher wattage resistor, um, but quarter watt resistors are really common. Uh, these right here, this size. And um, so my 1000 ohm resistors in the same kit is the same size. So if I use just one of those, it would absorb all the power and we get twice as hot as each one of these is getting. All right, so now we're gonna take some uh, measurements. Uh, we're gonna start with voltage right there. When I was talking uh, before, that was if this was charging, as I said before, it is not charging. So we're gonna have a lower uh, voltage. And um, after I charged it, it would have been about 13.6 volts drifted over time. So we got about 13.26 volts that is actually powering this circuit. And um, so we could come across here and see that uh, same uh, voltage that's across the load. We might lose a little bit of voltage due to resistance and stuff. Um, but in case, as I said before, we got that voltage, about two volts is being dropped by the LED. It takes about two volts before it will conduct and then it drops about two volts from series components which are the uh, current setting resistors right there protective resistors and uh, so there you can see we got a little bit less than 11 it looks like if I get a good connection right there so that's across the two resistors they're dividing that since they're equal value they're splitting it basically in half so somewhere around about 5.5 uh, volts each and uh, so that was one and again we lost uh, connection because it's a cheap board so we got about uh, 5.5 across each of them if I get a good measurement so now we're gonna measure uh, current before we do we need to open up the circuit these resistors uh, were getting fairly warm so I moved the LED first LED doesn't get as warm as uh, the resistors um, they had time to cool down and again this is a cheap board and uh, so I'm gonna angle that so it's a little easier to see um, you kinda gotta wiggle it in you don't want to force these wires into a cheap board it uh, bends the metal and it doesn't connect as good anymore and now we will set the multimeter to measure milliamps of current also since we're using a battery here it's a good idea to uh, turn off your load whenever you're not uh, using it and uh, so in any case we have it open now we can measure the current going through here and you can see we got about 11 milliamps of current as I uh, said uh, before because um, this is close to a thousand ohms of resistance a little bit less uh, so if we had 11 volts across it we can expect since it's a little less than a thousand ohms of resistance a little bit more than 11 milliamps of current if there's 11 volts across it looked like it was actually a little bit less um, but in case there you can see 11 milliamps of current um, make sure you turn off the meter when you're done especially uh, measuring current get it off of current all right, so I removed the uh, circuit there, put the cap back on the battery that we were using to uh, power this. And um, so you don't want to over discharge it. Luckily, uh, there should be protection circuitry. Generally there is with these batteries. So that will automatically shut off if you start dipping below 10 volts, um, but you don't want to push it. Um, you know, you should probably stop at 12 volts. And uh, so we got spec specifications right down here. 12.8 uh, volts that's the nominal voltage and then these are 7 amp hour batteries so we were using 0 0.014 amps basically in that range and uh, so it take hundreds of hours to fully discharge this with this circuit uh, right there and um, there you can see you can charge it up to like 14.6 volts but you don't have to you could charge it with the uh, 14.2 volts and you don't even have to do that you could if you're going to manually charge it and want to be safe just apply 13.6 volts and it will go to that. It just won't build up as much charge, even though it's 13.6 volts, um, whether you charge it that way or if you charge it at a higher voltage. So higher voltage just squeezes in more charge, um, but ultimately you end up at 13.6 volts if you charge it to that voltage or higher, um, but cut the higher voltage once current uh, really drops down. That's important. A charger should do that for you automatically. 
Um, but in case there's seven amp hour battery, it's very common for a battery to be able to fully uh, charge or fully discharge in an hour. That's kind of common, but not always. So make sure you look up the specifications of the battery that you're using. For this video series, I'm gonna be using very low current. Um, so in any case, this was a long video, but hopefully you enjoyed. Um, again, this series, we're gonna look at using a 12.8 volt nominal voltage lithium iron phosphate battery to power uh, probably all the circuits that I've done before, pretty close to all of them, and uh, probably uh, different ones. Um, so the more voltages you can work with, uh, the better you are at uh, doing electronics. So hope you enjoy.